now that you know how to draw Lewis structures, let's talk about something called resonance and bond order. Remember when we drew SO2, I decided to put that double bond on the left? Well, I could just as easily have decided to put it on the right. Okay. And I would have ended up with that structure. These two structures are not exactly the same. And the first one, the oxygen on the left has the double bond, and the second one, the oxygen on the right has a double bond. This isn't just the same molecule flipped over. Those are different oxygens, okay? It would be like they're twins, and if I gave M&Ms to one twin and two M&Ms to the other twin, they're different atoms. These are called resonant structures. So this is when I move double bonds to different places to give me structures that are equally likely, correct, proper, okay? It's a way of describing where the electrons are bonding when a single structure doesn't give the whole picture. So let's look at SO3 from the beginning and see what happens here. So first thing I do is count valence electrons and I come up with 24. So we'll start by assuming that sulfur is in the middle, which it is. Okay, I draw my single bonds and I give everybody 8. Okay, and if I take the time to count those, I find out that I have 26 electrons. So remember, two extra means I need a double bond. So remember, don't try to fix that structure. Start over. I can put that double bond on the left. I can put that double bond on the right. Or I can put that double bond on the bottom. There's three different O's that could get those. And then I go through and I give everybody eight electrons. Okay. Lots of dotting in this chapter. We get really good at making dots. It's not much of a life skill, but, you know, whatever. So this has three resonant structures. They're equally correct, okay? And in real life, what happens is this extra pair of electrons, you know, in the double bond here, okay, spends about a third of the time on the left, about a third of the time on the right, and about a third of the time it's on the bottom. So the real structure is kind of an average of those three. So in real life, it's really an average of the three resonant structures. So we're going to come up with something to describe that called bond order. So we're going to look at these structures, including another one. I'm going to go ahead and add carbon dioxide here at the bottom. Okay. And we're going to look at where the electrons are. Um, and how, what sort of the bond order just refers to, is it single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, somewhere in between, okay? So this first one, if you notice, it's, it's, it's all single bonds, okay? Another way of saying all single bonds is to say that the bond order is one. It's just another way of saying it's all single bonds, okay? If you look at CO2 here at the bottom, it's all double bonds, Another way of saying it's all double bonds is to say the bond order is two. Now when there's resonance structures, it's a little more complicated, right? For the SO2, it's a double bond on the left and a single bond on the right. Well, what's the average of one and two? One and a half. So its bond order is one and a half, okay? For SO3, we've got a double and two single. Now, I'm not sure if it's clear to you that the average of that is one and a third. So here's a little trick that will get you the answer if you have a little trouble with the math in your head. First thing you do is you say there's a total of four lines, okay? All right, I've got four lines here. And it's divided amongst three places. So four thirds or one and a third. So the bond order of SO3 is one and a third. Um, we don't write it as four thirds, we write it as one and a third. Why? I don't know, that's just the way we do it. A couple more practice ones, just so we get good at drawing Lewis structures and resonant structures. And general rule is you only have to draw resonant structures if I tell you to. Okay, other than that, you can just draw, draw one of them. So this polyatomic ion nitrate has 24 electrons. So let's assume the nitrogen is in the middle which it is, 
So we assume all single bonds and we give everybody eight. And if I count, I've got 26. So two extra means I'm wrong and I need a double bond. So I can put it on the left or I can put it on the right or I can put it on the bottom. So how many resonance structures does nitrate have? Three. Okay. Of course I want to go through and put my lone pairs. Okay. It's a little tedious but you're not allowed to skip this step ever. Okay. If I can do it, you can do it. And you'll see after a while it gets kind of fast. Also, it's an ion. So let's go ahead and put it in its brackets and make it an ion. So three resonance structures and what's its bond order? Well, pick one of them to look at. I've got one, two, three, four lines in three places. So its bond order is one and a third. Nitrite, five and 12 and one is 18 electrons. Okay, we'll put nitrogen in the middle. Give everybody eight. And when I count, I've got 20. So two extra means a double bond. I can put it on the left or I can put it on the right. Okay, so how many resonance structures? Two resonance structures. Give everybody an octet. So again, it's an ion, make it an ion. Try not to forget this step. Two resonance structures and the bond order is, what's the average of two and one, all right? A double bond and a single bond, the average of that is one and a half. And again, you can use that trick, a total of three lines in two places, one and a half. So nitrate had a bond order of one and a third, and nitrite had a bond order of one and a half. Well, one and a half is bigger than one and a third, right? That means this has more electrons in it. It means it's stronger. So the bonds in nitrite are stronger than the bonds in nitrate. So bond order just gives us an idea of how strong the bonds are.